Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nady, and today we're going over the latest best and worst of Boutay Tay. As you beautiful people know, any tiff you may have, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh my little great gumdrops, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you're having a great day so far. I myself am doing wonderful. My nose and eyes are running. I just used a setting spray, got some in my eyes, and whoo shit! That stuff burns. It's like I ate a hot pepper. <laughs> Anyways, we are back again with one of these, it has been a hot damn minute. I don't even remember the last time we've done one of these, but honestly, I've not been super into makeup. I don't know, have you been? Maybe it's just me? I kind of feel like the world hasn't been super into makeup lately, but it seems like my flow with makeup is kind of like a tide. It comes and goes, so I don't really have a ton of products to put in the categories, but we have the yas category, the meh category, and then the hell no. But I have reviewed a few products lately that I've put in here, and then I do use a few things off camera, like I do have a life outside of YouTube. I'm just kidding. No, I don't. But let's start with the Yas category, and these really don't go in any kind of order. But if we did have an order to this bullfuckery, this would be at the very tip top. This is the Lady Gaga House Labs Foundation. Oh my god. This stuff is freaking divine. I keep trying to find cheaper alternatives to it, but nothing quite matches this. Like, yeah, there's some things that are similar, but nothing gives, like, the beautiful dewy natural finish that this gives. I just have to figure out the perfect primer for it, because as of now, it does kind of slip and slide when I go outside. So it's not really heat resistant, but I know it can be. I just need to get the right primer for her, which normally if I don't have a primer that would fit a foundation, I'd be like, fuck this, I'm sending this back. But this is so damn good that I'm willing to purchase other products to make this work. And we know how far up Cheap's ass I am. So far up there, I can see daylight from its mouth. And this is $45, which isn't terribly expensive for a foundation, but it is kind of higher up there. So the fact that I actually do love it really kind of tells you something. Hopefully this looks like the bee's knees on other people's skin, but from what I gathered from a lot of the commenters, it looks great. So yeah, totally worth it. If you get a chance to try it out or even a sample, grab it. Oh my god, it's so good. And next up, we actually have the same product, but combined with another one. This is my cheap ass foundation that is like $2.35. Maybelline Fit Me, which I always talk about, I actually combined it in equal parts, and it looks even prettier if you can imagine. You get the beautiful coverage that this offers with the heavy heavenly glow and skincare that this gives you. And other than getting a little bit more coverage, it doesn't alter it that much. Like the formula seemed pretty much the same. It didn't wear any different. So basically you can get this and add twice the life for $2. It's a really, really good combination. I've not tried it with the dewy one because it oxidizes on me. But these two together are actual fucking gold. Next up, we have quite possibly one of the prettiest freaking powders I think I've ever used. That is the Floresis Silky Powder. I recently did a sponsorship with them and I used the shit out of this. And every time that I used this, I liked it more and more. And I am not at all a powder snob. Like I will use inexpensive shit. I'll use expensive things. Just whatever looks good. And this is the tits. It comes in two forms. There's a pressed one and then a loose one. I don't know that there's a difference between the two, but it's made with silk. And so it just feels really, really silky. It is kind of expensive, but if you're in the market for a really good powder that just blurs your skin, this is where it's at. It's so pretty. And if you actually look at the other products from the brand, they are heavenly. I'm super curious to try more from them sometime. And you know, if the white powder really isn't your thing, that's okay. But really, if you don't like powder, this next product is around the same price range. And I actually think it might be prettier than any powder that I've ever used. And this isn't even a powder. This is the Mali Face Defender, I think. It's actually like a silicone gel and you use this sponge, which I have basically destroyed. I promise you I have not swallowed swallowed and regurgitated it. But this little bitch, I think was like 38 bucks. And you gently press this into here and then apply it anywhere that you want set. I have never seen anything quite like this before. It is outstanding. Like, I am not one to be dramatic. <laughs> yeah, right. But this is worth any bit of theatrics and drama around it. I'm not gonna show you now because it instantly mattifies whatever it touches. And I've worked hard to get this glow. But even if you put this just on bare skin without a foundation, you will look like you're wearing a foundation. It's something that whether or not you're a makeup artist, you should have. Like, if you wear makeup, you need this. I actually think I recommend this even over the house lab 
Snaps Foundation, and I love that shit. Well, no, maybe they're pretty much like on par with each other. I wouldn't use them together because this is mattifying. I feel like even if you put this underneath your makeup, like put on a primer and then this, I kind of feel like your makeup would be flawless. I just can't find a damn thing wrong with this product. It's a little bit pricey, but in my opinion, it is worth every freaking penny. I don't really fuck with makeup that much anymore, but I will always have this. Actually, here, I'll show you on my wrist how it looks. Okay, we can see the foundation right there, and we'll instantly make it matte just like that. Actually, I don't even know if you can see a difference. It was way more dramatic in my review. Definitely go check it out. Oh, but goddamn, that just like instantly looks like natural stuff skin now. But it really does mattify and make something lose the glow. That's probably the only downside to it, but it makes your face feel unlike any other product ever could, so it's kind of worth it. Like, just add a little bit of highlighter to get the glow back. So stinking good. And next we have a product that I think I've actually talked about on here. That is the Bobbi Brown, I don't know, some kind of face base thing. This is just a little baby sample that one of my besties gave me, but I have used the ever-loving shit out of this, and I still have so much. It's so skin-friendly. It's almost like a moisturizer, yet it still makes the makeup really stick the hell down. It smells nice too, very similar to the Jones Road shit that they came out with, except this actually works. We'll talk about that product later. I've tried a few Bobbi Brown products though, and this is definitely up there with one of my favorites. It is so professional feeling and seeming. It goes great with any skin that I've used it on. I just love this so damn much. And it seems to last throughout the heat, like I go outside and it's 105 out sometimes with 95% humidity, and this really helps my makeup last through that. It's probably not something that I'd use singularly with like a beat glam face. I'd maybe want to mix it with something to really add stickiness, but to help add that moisture to your skin to make your makeup look great throughout the day, this is where the fuck it's at. Oh god, I love it. And I typically apply this next product right after, and I've talked about this so many times. That is my Dior Forever Skin Corrector. This is by far my favorite concealer ever. It even beats my Lancome. Uh -huh. I was all up in Lancome's Vahini for a long time, but I keep going back to this. Look at how used it is. That is disgusting. You know it's loved if it's filthy. But this is the shade 3C. I stopped using this for so long because it was so dark, but now that I'm actually in the sunshine and not in a cave in Michigan anymore, it matches me. I have it on now. It's so natural. It's not crease proof unless you make it crease proof. Like, you have to use the correct products, but when you do, oh my gosh. This is the tip of the top holy grail for me. I don't even mind its hefty price tag because I go in with so little. Like, I barely use any product at all. I wipe everything off of here. I put a little on my eyelid, right under my eye, and then right there to neutralize the redness. And it's all the coverage I need to give me a nice little boost of confidence and not make me feel so old. Not even old, but she's starting to sag. Well, that's what happens when we don't sleep. I totally recommend their product. If you've never tried a Dior product, I recommend that over everything. Over their air flash, over their backstage. It's the shit. And honey, the makeup can't take all of the credit here. I've actually been using a few new skincare items. I talked about using The Ordinary in my House Labs review, and I had said that over time, if it continues making my skin look good, I'd tell you about it, and it works. So, some people seem to hate The Ordinary, some people seem to love it. I personally adore it. It's affordable. It's not a brand that's necessarily gonna give you a facelift, but if you can't afford to go get skin peels, this is a great second option. But my most recent little trio is the Hyaluronic Acid 2% plus B5, and I mix it with the Revolution Reverse res resveratrol? Fucking hell. Resveratrol 3% plus ferulic acid 3%. Okay. And then once that's good and soaked in, I hop over to the fridge and grab my Gran Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. I let that sink in, then I go down the rest of my steps of just creams and eye creams, nothing too special. That stuff has totally transformed like the first layer of my skin. All of the pores that I've been dealing with and collecting dirt, they just seem smaller or something. I don't know can pores actually get smaller? But for the first time in a long time, I feel confident with my skin and it's after using that product. I'm not like a spokesperson for them or anything, but I freaking love it. I'm pretty sure all of that was definitely under $30, maybe closer to 20. I think one of them was on the more expensive side for the ordinary, which is like anything over $10. But between that shit and that red face mask that they have that kind of burns your face off a little bit, 
I am in love. And the final product in our Yes category is my Lunar Boutete Lip Oil. I love this shit so much. I have it on right now. I always have it on because I have perpetually asshole-ish lips. They're always dry and puckered. And this really does seem to help. Hold on, I want a little more. I think it comes in a few different shades. This seems pink to me. And it has a very slight flavor. I don't know what of. But I apply this in the morning. I apply it right before bed. I apply it throughout the day. And it really hydrates my skin. Like I used to have crusty little potato looking chip lips. And now... Now I don't. They're very kissable, suckable, fuckable. It does give a little bit of shine. This doesn't last too terribly long. However, when I wake up in the morning, it's still on. Like I can go like, mm, and I can still feel product rubbing around. So it lasts a long time. I don't know the price of it, but this is part of my everyday routine. I really like it. If they're ever having a sale, pick it up, buttercup. And next for our meh category, we actually only have one product and that is the brow stamp. Y'all remember this? This went viral a few months ago and I gave in, but I totally forgot to review it. So for like $27, you get an eyebrow stencil and an eyebrow stamp. I think it's only like 16 or 17 for just the stamp. And then you're paying like 10 or $15 more for the brow stencil, which I did not get because you can get this on wish.com, AliExpress or Amazon for like $3. It comes with an elastic and so many different shapes. I use these for drag all the time. I did not need to order a very overpriced stencil. So I didn't. And now is where we get into the very scammy part. I put one shade in my cart, which was like $17. I was like, okay, fine. I go to the checkout and they were like, do you want to add this other color? And I was like, no, I want one color. So I continue my checkout, click make payment and oh, what the fuck? There's two things in my cart that they've charged me for. Without asking me, they added the second thing to my cart and then I paid for it. I thought, well, fuck a duck in the back of a boat. I don't need to, so let's just write them. I think this was maybe like, a Monday or a Tuesday. Well, like five days later, I finally get an email saying, oh, I'm so sorry. We've dispatched your order. Why don't you not accept this order and just go ahead and reorder your original item? Well, I've already waited like five days for my order to even be dispatched. This shit has gone viral. I need to review it while it's still hot. And so now if I order, I'm gonna have to wait the weekend and then it probably won't even get dispatched till the next Friday. So I was thinking, well, if this were me, I would have said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, keep the second one. Here's a refund because you know, that's good customer service, which is kind of asking a lot for these days. So I thought, okay, I'll go in and reorder. Well, it was all sold out. So I think, okay, they have a return policy. I think probably on unused products. I just won't use one and then I'll send that back. So I hop my ass in front of the camera. I pull these out and I open one up and I'm like, oh, well, this is interesting. It's cute. It's a nice size, like a little pocket vibrator. It has a seal for my protection. So I went ahead and twisted the seal off. So then I pulled out the other one just to compare, not opening it, and it didn't have a safety seal. I opened this and it seemed as though she had been used. So now I have two used products, one of which I didn't even use, and I can't even return this. I just felt as though I'd been scammed, hoodwinked, I was bamboozled. And in the end, these aren't even that amazing. Like you hold this up to your face, and you press it in, and it's really splotchy. I had to go in multiple times. I think there's just a little bit of a learning curve. Like if you do your brows every day and you don't really have time, I could see this being a useful tool, but I really don't think it'd be any different than dipping a sponge into like a thing of pomade. I am super disappointed with this purchase. I'm kind of upset that I got charged like almost $40 when I should have only been charged like half of that. And their customer service is really, really poor. So huge disappointment. This actually doesn't even deserve to be in the meh category, but it does kind of work. Like it is a little bit pretty. And finally, we have our hell no category, which I feel like this is the juiciest, most fun category, but it only has two products in it. Damn it, Nady, we got to try shittier makeup. We are starting this off with, you guessed it, the Jones Road fuckery. This is a Bobbi Brown company and I love Bobbi Brown. She's a freaking icon. So when I saw this product, which is supposed to be the perfect combination of skincare and a little bit of coverage, I was just wet. Which speaking of wet, the outside of this is super wet and oily and greasy. It's been leaking. I don't mind a natural product, but come the fuck on. This is separated like no other's biznatch, which means that it's able to leak out of this little 
little thing that they're protecting it with, or supposed to be protecting it with, and it just gets everywhere, and then it leaks out of this. And if that doesn't twist your titties, the actual product itself has no coverage. It literally looks like you took a stick of butter, rubbed it all over your face, and then went and played in the dirt. It is such a disappointment, and this was kind of expensive too. The only redeeming factor is the fact that they have really good customer service. They actually gave me all of my money back and told me to keep the product. Like more often than not, I will keep a product, but this had no room in my makeup stash. Like I wouldn't wish this product on my worst makeup enemy. It'd be great if it didn't have any kind of pigment in it and it were just like a skin face oil because that's basically all it is, but I wouldn't wear it in bed because of that little bit of pigment. I'm certain that it would be all over my pillowcase in the morning. So it's like, what do I do with this? You can't use it underneath makeup because your makeup will melt. You can use it on its own, but then you can't use other products because it's so oily. It's just a very, very specific customer that wants this. I know there are people that love the shit out of this. Good for you. I love that for you. But for me, it just wasn't a win. I think at this point in my life, I have enough hydration on my face. And this was just oil. It's basically tinted french fry grease. And last and absolutely least, we have the worst collaboration I have ever experienced in this makeup community. Totally pointless, totally disgusting, yet somehow gorgeous. And that is the Fapplebee's and Winky Lux lip glosses. These taste like barbecue sauce and honey and so many sins that shouldn't even be here. This is the epitome of a damn shame because they are so beautiful on the lips, but they actually smell and taste like, what is this? Fucking get me hot buffalo sauce, sweet chili kiss, and these bitches burn too. They don't plump or anything, they just burn. And the burning doesn't subside, nor does the flavor. In fact, after testing these, I shit you not, for a good 15 hours afterwards, even after I showered, even after I rinsed my mouth out with mouthwash, even after I brushed my teeth, applied different lip product, I could still taste these. I don't know if some got into my nose or what, but why was there a residing taste? I would rather lick a frozen cube of dog spit than ever try these on again. And that is pretty damn nasty. I can't believe I spent 60 bucks on this. I'm so disappointed. I'm fuming at the fact that they actually taste like their names. I thought sure as shit this was just like inspired because if it didn't have the flavor, these would be in my top category because they actually are so pretty. But the horrendous, horrific, obscene, absurd flavors just ruin everything. Winky Lux, you failed miserably. Their other products are great though. So I guess everyone's allowed to flop every now and again, but maybe do a less expensive flop. Woof, ugh. And that's all we got. Okay, bye. No, I'm just kidding, hi. <laughs> but that really is all we have. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. You know that I just love having you. And you know the spiel. If you want a little bit more me in your life, head over to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. You get videos a day early. You get Patreon-only content. And best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy, just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, will be available again soon at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere in line that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Bye.